I know I will not receive any views unless I somehow blow up from this video, and I really want to talk about the Jamie Newman vs. LaVar Ball debate, but that'll be done at another time. <sighs> another day of reading comments. Favorite part of the day. Let's see what we got here. I usually don't miss any comments. Let me just make sure I go through everything real quick. Ooh, a month ago. That's not good. Jesus, what does this one say? No, the worst basketball dad by far is LeVar Ball. <sighs> if there is one thing I hate the most, it's reading bullshit-ass comments. God damn. Okay. I made a video on the worst dad. Now everybody thinks LeVar is the worst dad. Do I have to make a video on LeVar Ball and Jamie Newman? I already promised the subscribers I will. Uh, fuck. Fuck it, I gotta do this shit again. Fucking hate this. Aw, oh, shit. Here we go again. Welp, eight months, 800k views, and maybe 5k subscribers ago, I made a video about Jamie Newman and how I didn't like his tactics as a basketball father. Well, after making that video, it came with a lot of mixed reviews, but mostly, uh positive reactions well in the video i said i know i will not receive any views unless i somehow blow up from this video and i really want to talk about the jamie newman versus laval ball debate but that'll be done at another time so my original plan was to upload it on father's day 2020 for the one year anniversary but my rabbit i mean lovely subscribers wanted to see the jamie newman versus laval ball video sooner rather than later so that is what i am here to do today against my own will. It's either that or I'm gonna start getting those asking Alvini to make the Jamie Newman vs. LeVar video day one type of comments, you know what I'm talking about. Anyways, the video will be comparing and contrasting the two in three categories. Claim to relevancy, opportunity for the children, and the overall outlook on what they have done since they're all about to start their professional career in one way or another. And it's up to you, the viewers, to decide who did it better, who sucks more, just do what you want to do, I don't care, everybody's different in their own way. So let's go on and start, shall we? You already know who it is. Roll it! He incurred an injury dealing with weights in the weight room, so he stitched up in the left hand doing all this. If you haven't seen my Jamie Newman video before this, then please go check it out for more insight on what I'm about to say. But to keep things simple, Jamie has been going after media attention from the beginning for relevancy, and that is the complete truth. He wanted to get his child, Julian Newman, noticed for being a child basketball prodigy as soon as the age of 10 years old. He has been on TV shows like The Conan O'Brien Show, The Steve Harvey Show, Ellen, and Good Morning America, and a few more apparently, but in my research, I couldn't find what they were specifically. Do I doubt it for a second? Not at all. From there, Jamie knew what he had to do to get more attention. He became the coach of Downey Christian School in Orlando, Florida, and let his 10-year-old son have all the opportunity in the world to make highlights, which made him even more relevant as he became the youngest player to score 1,000 points in varsity basketball history. When I was 10, I was happy to even score two points, let alone 1,000. He also has an underdog type story since he's a bit, uh, short. So it always makes a great David versus Goliath story whenever he does something great. And whenever David isn't throwing chairs at Goliath. Oh, uh, but too, wait, too soon? Jamie has been riding that hype train all the way up until now into Jillian's senior year, where he now has tons of basketball mixtapes all over the internet for people to witness the skill of his son. Because of this, he now has made the decision to make his own school, simply for Julian to become more famous by going against better competition for those sweet, sweet internet points. Plus, if he somehow beats as a good school, somehow, then he'll get even more internet cloud points, <coughs> which he hasn't done yet. <coughs> Other ways the family stays relevant is through a reality show with Overtime, one of the most famous basketball social media outlets, and they even seem to have some type of exclusive deal with Overtime, as they seem to be the only ones recording his game nowadays, for good reason. Either way, as long as Jamie has the help of one of the biggest basketball social media giants, then even if Julian does not go anywhere higher than high school basketball, he will stay relevant through the internet until the day he dies. 
Even though LeVar's claim to relevancy was a bit later than Jamie's, he has always been known as the bigger person, no pun intended, in the basketball world. LeVar has three children, Lonzo, Leangelo, and LaMelo. They were not known on the national scene until about four years ago as of now, as the oldest son Lonzo was coming up the ranks of his class as the number one point guard in the nation. And of course, when you have that label, the cameras will come. With those cameras came the opportunity of LeVar to make his magic. People can only imagine that it was a simple arrangement. The brothers won their games and LeVar will be his loud and extra self on the sidelines for people and for cameras to see. LeVar was basically the pure stereotype of loud basketball dad. LeVar even used this platform of relevance to promote his brand, the Big Baller brand, through his kid's success. LeVar had the brand for the longest time and even been getting some decent money from it in his local community, but with the self-promotion of a lifetime on Ballas Life and other outlets like that, his brand basically exploded. Kids and fans were wearing it at the games, and I even knew a few people at my high school that wore a Big Baller brand, and even people at my gym that wore a Big Baller brand. And you can only imagine that they look like the type of people that would wear BBB and other hype beast type brands. But let's talk about the things LeVar did just to make himself even more relevant. Firstly, he was on ESPN multiple times, and that's an understatement. He was on First Take, Undisputed on Fox, NBA's to Jump, Sports Nation, and he was even on Sports Center as a guest. Like, when was there ever a time someone's dad, someone's regular old dad, made it onto Sports Center as a special guest. And with that platform, he said a lot of wild stuff on ESPN that just made that just made him even more famous and relevant. What made you say that one day Lonzo is going to be better than Steph Curry at Golden State? Hey, let me tell you this right now. I have the utmost confidence in what my boy is doing. I'm going to tell you right now, he better than Steph Curry to me. I'm going to tell you right now before you see it, UCLA going to win the NCAA championship. You think I'm playing? You're calling it right here, right now. Right here and right now. Guaranteed. Come see me when they win it. But anyways, is it safe to say that LeVar was even more famous than his kids at one point? Like the nigga was even on CNN. Mother fucking CNN. Regular ass humans do not make it onto CNN as a special guest. But his rise was just as hard as his fall. After his little stint in Lithuania, he created a league called the JBA that featured young adults looking to get paid and not go to college. They even did an international tour after the regular season. However, that only lasted for so long. After that, LeVar got into a few legal disputes, including not paying some of his players in that league. But now he is kind of back after all of that, but nowhere as big as he used to be. But he's still making wild claims though when he's on TV, as we can all expect, of course. Now the second category is all about the opportunity for the children, and I'll start with LeVar for this one. Now one thing both of these fathers have in common is that they're both trainers, and they train their kids from the youngest age possible. I know people in my personal life that train their children as soon as they're able to walk by getting them used to a basketball, and I bet they did the same thing. But let's talk about something that everyone already knew. LeVar planned everything out from day one, and we can all see it. He even married his wife, who is six foot one. And if y'all know anything about genetics, then you should know that they were set to be athletes from the start. Now, like I said, they were not nationally known until 2016, as far as I remember. So they were doing everything in the shadows until Lonzo started to go off. Now, LeVar knew his kids had star potential, so he sent them to Chino Hills High School where they won a few state championships and were even ranked the number one team in the nation at one point. He set his sons up for basketball success, most definitely. Even if they were at that school and did not do all the stuff that they did, they would at least be playing college ball on scholarships somewhere, at the least. But because of how LeVar sent them to a top school in one of the top places to play basketball in one of the toughest divisions in that state, it was a no-brainer that his kids would be successful in basketball after high school. Even Leangelo, who was thought to be the worst brother, ended up in the G League. Even if the G League didn't even play in one single game, they just used it for publicity, but, but, we're not going to get into that right now. Being able to get one son in the NBA was one thing, but getting three of them with three different play styles is just something we've never witnessed before in NBA history. Now, Jamie Newman had it right at first and set his son up for success when he was only 10 and basically killing people on the varsity level. But that's the thing. He was 10. That's God mode compared to what other 10 year olds are doing right now. But if you watch any of my three Newman family videos, you already know what I'm about to say. The nigga is short and short is an understatement. The average height of a man in the United States is five foot nine and he claims to be five foot seven. 
That's a fucking lie. He's probably five foot five. We know how people will, you know, manipulate their height sometimes. So because of all this, we know shorter people have a harder time in sports when it comes to people taking them seriously, matchup problems, things like that. I can imagine shorter people having to work a lot harder to get noticed as basketball players, especially as basketball players. Julian has the worth ethic. I will definitely give him that. However, I have to say this again. Jamie Newman fucked him up a little bit being a garden gnome and then deciding to make another garden gnome and giving him a basketball. Now, can we agree that Coach's sons are kind of cancer nine times out of 10? Now, Jamie takes that to an 11 for Julian Newman. He allows them to do whatever he wants on the court with no consequences at all. And before y'all say anything about me not having children, believe me, I don't want children. I'm 20 years old. Please let me live my life out a little bit before that happens. Let me tell you a couple of things that Jamie let Julian get away with. Now, we all remember the infamous IMG game, right? You know, them getting beaten by 50. After that game, Julian decides to get into a fight and throw a chair at someone. And in another game, when they got slapped, they end up, he ended up getting into a street fight. Now, usually, you know, if you're the coach, you suspend the player, you expel the player in a couple of cases, you know, but this is the dad. The dad leads the team. The dad didn't do anything. No suspension, no, no, like, talking to, no yelling. Let's him play the next day. That's it. I once slapped a kid after a game one time in the eighth grade and got a two-game suspension. My parents beat my ass and was forced to write an apology letter to the school and the child. He didn't get anything. He probably got rewarded since it brought more clout to the family, or at least more clout to himself and his social media stuff. And y'all still think that's good parenting? Now, if you want to get looked at seriously by a scout, you gotta win or lead a team in some type of way. But he's not a leader. Instead, he's a hothead who throws furniture at people when they get upset like someone's mom. Now, lastly, one more thing that just needs to be said is that they just don't win, mainly because he takes a good 75% of the shots. It'd be one thing if he made a good 50 to 45% of them and win, but he doesn't even do that. And his dad allows him to let his son do this and not win games, mainly just for the benefit of Julian. He should know that this isn't the way to go to college or play pro ball after the fact. If he wanted his son to go to college, he could have let him go to a better school and where he's not the coach or just taught him to be more well-rounded or something. Now, let me say again, he did give his son some opportunity, but it wasn't to the same extent of what LeVar did for his sons because Julian doesn't go against anyone major on a game-to-game -game basis, and when he does, he just gets torched and I guess exposed, if you want to put it that way. For what it's worth, he did give his son a lot of opportunity to do stuff. He just didn't do anything with it. Lastly, let's talk about the overall outlook of what these two have done. Now, I will admit, and no, this is not from a basketball perspective. This is strictly from an overall perspective of all the stuff that he has done. Jamie Newman did his thing. In my Jamie Newman video, people have been telling me that he has made money doing this, so that makes him successful, and yes, I will admit, that does. Though, I like a good hustle, that doesn't mean I have to agree with how it's done, but for the sake of this section and video, yes, Jamie Newman has done a great job getting that sweet, sweet internet clout and money. He realized how easy it was to exploit the very highlight heavy influence basketball social media outlets and had his son do things that would get him on the map and he made a killing doing so. Now I myself care nothing for highlights as I like to know more of what someone's overall game is like, but again, Jamie did a good job using it. The man got overtime in some of the other basketball media outlets in the palm of his hands recording his son's games and even has that reality show I talked about, even though that's probably going to end soon. And after Julian graduates, he'll definitely be having some brand deals, most likely with overtime, and playing in celebrity games and stuff like that due to it. So again, even though I don't like your tactics as a basketball coach, and definitely not as a basketball dad, I will at least applaud you for now for how you turned this into a living. Now again, I think either LeVar is a madman or just planned out everything from the beginning. He set up his kids to have the best basketball success possible. Now has he made some fatal mistakes throughout the way? Yes. Pulling LiAngelo from UCLA really hurt his possibility to play pro ball. Even though things kind of worked out in the end, he honestly should have let him take his punishment or just let him sat out and just transfer. But again, it worked out, so what do I know? But we can all agree LeVar is very hasty with his children. If anything doesn't work out, he'll immediately move him. Lithuanian was not the move, and the JBA was definitely not the move, especially since you didn't pay some of them. But did his crazy plan work out for the most part? 
Absolutely. Lonzo was starting to look like a great two way player after he fixed his jumper, and Lamelo is a top three draft pick in this year's draft thanks to him blowing up in Australia. So at least that was a good move. Again, he is a great businessman and did great businessman type moves. He saw his kids getting clout from Ball's life and other outlets and used his big personality to blow up his brand. No force or anything being done wrong to the children, he truly became a character and flourished because of it. The most wrong thing he did is took Leangelo and Lamelo for a ride just to get them to the league, but hey, they made it nonetheless that just shows how good they are. Now that was my thoughts on the two main basketball dads that have been taking the internet by storm for these last few years. These two are definitely some characters and they have left their mark on basketball as a whole for this generation. But I will ask, who do you have winning this battle of basketball dads? There should be a poll in the top right hand corner of the screen, so answer it there. If I forgot, then the comment section should be fine. Again, like I said in the intro, I was planning on making this next Father's Day, but I did not expect to have 6,000 subscribers already, so yeah, it came kinda early. To the people who requested this after I basically promised I would make this one of these days, here you are and I hope you enjoyed it. I'm very thankful that my channel blew up and it's thanks to my subscribers and to my new people who are watching this video right now, why not consider subscribing? I love making basketball content and would love to keep doing this, so keep giving me support and I'll keep the videos coming. Leave a comment because as you already know, I respond to every comment. Anyways, thank you for watching and let's keep growing, but let me stop wasting your time. This is your boy Alvini Linguini saying peace.